Elvis Presley is known as the king of rock and roll, but he didn't earn that title unanimously. In fact, some people couldn't stand him. In this video, we're taking a look at some famous musicians who did not like Elvis Presley. So stick around as Facts First presents celebrities who absolutely hated Elvis Presley. Jerry Lee Lewis In the 1950s, there were several other claimants to the title King of Rock and Roll, all vying for the throne. Other contenders included Chuck Berry and Jerry Lee Lewis. All three had their fair share of inner demons. In the end, Elvis ultimately became the claimant to the throne, largely because he was smart enough to hide his demons from the fledgling genre's youthful fans. Jerry Lee was about the same age as Presley, had a similar upbringing, and found success in Memphis as well. He was born in Faraday, Louisiana in 1935. He was 10 months younger than Elvis, who was born a couple hundred miles away in Tupelo, Mississippi. Both musicians were raised in poverty in the Deep South, grew up with Christianity, and were drawn to music at a very young age. So it seems they were destined to become rivals. While Jerry Lee was still in high school, he earned the nickname The Killer. He hated the name, but it was what his friends called him. He got the nickname because he killed it, musically speaking. Ironically, however, the nickname took on a much more literal meaning. By 1976, both Elvis and Jerry Lee's musical careers were already on the way out. Both stars had already achieved quite a bit, both in the music scene and in Hollywood. For the longest time, the two were rather supportive of each other while still being rivals in a healthy way. On the morning of November 23, 1976, however, the cops responded to a call about a drunk man carrying a gun outside of Presley's Graceland home in Memphis. The fact that the individual ended up being Lewis didn't stop the police from arresting him. Shortly after he was taken into custody, the media erupted with accusations that Jerry Lee was planning to shoot his old musical rival. Shockingly, this wasn't a one-off incident. Earlier that week, Lewis had attempted to enter Graceland as well. The evening before he was arrested, Lewis had rolled up to Elvis' estate in a Rolls Royce, only to be informed by the security guard, Harold Lloyd, that Presley was already asleep. Lewis politely thanked Lloyd and drove off. Later that evening, however, he crashed his car and was cited for DUI and operating a vehicle without a license. The following evening, when he showed up with a pistol, he arrived driving a brand new Lincoln Continental. And now Lewis seemed to be in a much darker state of mind. Lloyd later told reporters Lewis appeared to be out of his mind. He was screaming, cussing, and creating quite a scene, and he demanded the guard get Elvis on the phone. Lewis even reportedly told Lloyd to tell Elvis that the killer was there to see him. Naturally, Lloyd responded with panic. After calling the house, he was told he should notify the police. Not long after, six police cars were dispatched to the mansion. Elvis had been apparently watching the entire situation unfold on closed-circuit footage. When he talked to Lloyd and asked what was going on, that's when he was informed Lewis was wielding a pistol and raising hell. Presley reportedly told Lloyd he didn't want to talk to Lewis and asked him to make sure law enforcement was notified about the situation. He said they should tell the cops to lock Lewis's butt up and throw away the key. Billy Kirkpatrick, Lewis's arresting officer, later reported that the singer had broken a window of his car when he threw a champagne bottle through it and he had suffered a facial injury in the process. The pistol found on him was not only loaded but already cocked. He was ultimately arrested for being drunk in public and carrying a loaded weapon. But the charges mostly just went away. The musicians never met again. Just 10 months later, Presley was found dead. Frank Sinatra Old Blue Eyes was never really a fan of Elvis or his music, but he still invited Elvis to be on his popular primetime TV show in 1960 as a special guest. The appearance was meant to celebrate Presley's return to the U.S. after serving in the military. During that appearance, the two stars joked on stage and even mentioned their rivalry. They performed a medley of each other's songs, and it seemed like their beef was more lighthearted and for show. Behind the scenes, however, the two shared some seriously bad blood. Sinatra likely couldn't stand Presley for a good reason. We now know that Elvis was having an affair with Juliet Prowse while she was still dating Frank. Prowse and Sinatra met on the set of the musical Can Can. Sinatra was so impressed, he invited her on his program as a backup singer, and they fell in love. Prowse met Presley in 1960 while they were co-stars in G.I. Blues. The two began a passionate affair. Despite the fact that she and Presley were secretly dating, Sinatra asked Juliet to marry him in 1962. That didn't happen because Prowse wanted to focus on her career. John Lennon Former Beatle John Lennon was known for being somewhat of a leftist icon. 
While Lenin spent much of his free time advocating for social justice and political change, Presley never used his platform to make any overt political statement. When they met in the 60s, Lenin described Presley as being a right-wing Southern bigot. Apparently, the resentment shared between the two musical rivals was instantaneous. According to iconic music presenter Bob Harris, it was, quote, hate at first sight. It's also alleged that then-President Nixon had tasked Elvis to spy on John Lennon due to his very public criticism of the war in Vietnam. Nixon viewed Lennon as a counterculture enemy. He even tried to deport him on multiple occasions. Elvis and Nixon were great friends. As such, he was more than willing to agree to gather as much info about Lennon as he could. Before John met Elvis, he had a great deal of respect for his music, but after meeting the guy, he was greatly disappointed and disillusioned to discover he was basically another one of Nixon's pawns. Dolly Parton While Elvis was the king of rock and roll, Dolly Parton is the reigning queen of country music. But Parton was never one to get lost in the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. At the end of the day, all she's ever wanted to do is share her musical gift with the world while using her fame as a means to spread positivity throughout the world. While she's ridiculously rich, she grew up fairly poor in Tennessee as one of 11 siblings. Throughout her childhood, there was never much money to go around, and by the time she was 10, she was already working to help support her family. Pardon later said she was grateful for growing up poor as she got to see firsthand just how hard her mom and dad struggled to take care of the family while stretching a dollar further than anyone could imagine. To this day, whenever she thinks about spending money on things like clothing, wigs, and home furnishing, she thinks about how her family would have frugally spent that cash if they had it. Elvis, on the other hand, came to be an almost absurd symbol of extravagance. By the time he was dubbed the king, he had already fully embraced the title by purchasing luxury cars, clothes, houses, and vehicles. When asked what she thought about people like Elvis, Dolly expressed she was glad she didn't have to live like him as all that fame and popularity had gone to his head and led him to believe he was some sort of god instead of just being extremely lucky. Simply put, she found Elvis entitled and disconnected from his roots. Parton further told reporters she would never want to live as publicly as Elvis did. In 1980, she told Rolling Stone about the time Presley requested to cover one of her famous songs, I Will Always Love You. At first, she was excited about it. The song had been a number one hit for her, so the prospect of someone as big as Presley covering it was pretty exciting. Unfortunately, after the two sat down and discussed the specifics, they weren't able to reach an agreement about publishing rights. Elvis wanted at least half of the publishing deal, but Parton wasn't okay with that. Ultimately, Parton didn't let Presley cover the song, and apparently, she was pretty heartbroken about it. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know Jerry Lee Lewis was once arrested outside of Elvis's home with a gun? Or that Elvis helped Richard Nixon spy on John Lennon? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.